Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this week's long coffee break. Um, wrapping up the month of, of April um, with this coffee break. I'm Neil Ryder, the Senior Account Executive for um, Long Building Technologies, our Seattle Security Solutions team. Um, and with us this morning is Jordan Ramadan, the mm -hmm. Northwest OpenEye Business Development Manager. So we, um, we thank Jordan for his time this morning. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, if you could enter them into the chat window, we'll ask those as we go along. Um, and with that, um, Jordan's going to present the OpenEye Web Services platform this morning. And like I say, if you have any questions, please enter them into the chat window. And with that, Jordan, um, we'll let you get started. Awesome. Thank you so much, Neil. I will uh, transition here to uh, our uh, open eye slide deck that we have uh, prepared for uh, this conversation here today. So uh, once again, I have a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Long Building Technologies, for having us here from uh, OpenEye here to talk about our uh, cloud video platform called OpenEye Web Services, uh, aka OWS. So as you can see here, uh, this is you know New York City in the background, but uh, what's actually really cool about OpenEye is the fact that we are a very local company uh, founded in Spokane, Washington, technically Liberty Lake, right outside of Spokane. Um, and, you know, we were acquired by, acquired by Alarm.com in 2019. And I like to talk about this because they have really invested into OpenEye. Um, we hired about 35 employees last year and doubled our development staff. And we're set to hire another 30 employees this year. So we should round out the end of 2021 at about uh, 180 employees on staff here within the OpenEye division of alarm.com. You know, we are their uh, commercial video platform. The uh, CEO still owns 15% of OpenEye. Uh, he's a fairly young guy, he's gonna be around here for a while. So it's just good to know that, um, you know, we, we, we're gonna be here for a while um, and we've got a really strong foundation and, and, and the cloud platform itself has been uh, around for almost six years now. So this isn't, you know, a new product uh, that's entered to the market. Uh, like I said, the product and the company itself has a really strong foundation and it's a really exciting time to be here and a part of OpenEye. So without further ado, we'll take a look at really what our architecture looks like. And so I'd like to keep this open for discussion. So if anything uh, comes up, feel free to you know, jump in and ask questions. So the OpenEye cloud managed video architecture is here highlighted in uh, blue. But as you can see on the left, we've got a couple of different uh, models of doing, you know, cloud video or vSaaS, you know, video surveillance as a service. And this has kind of been a mystery in the past, right? Because there's all these different kinds of ways to go about doing this. So what we see here on the far left is really just a, a camera that's recording all the video straight to the cloud. Um, and, you know, we, we see this as a, you know, maybe a good opportunity and uh, more like residential uh, small camera counts, because once you get, uh, you know, using multiple cameras, especially high resolution cameras, it's really gonna bog down the network. So people really kind of shifted to having like a, a mini server on site or like a buffer device, right? Where now the video would be stored uh, for a short period of time and then maybe at nighttime to mitigate uh, uh, you know, tension on the network, they would offload the video at nighttime up into the cloud. Um, but you know, there can definitely be some fallbacks to that. Like the video is usually kind of stuck on that uh, device um, and not accessible ex uh, remotely until it's pumped up to the cloud. And if all the video doesn't get uploaded to the cloud at nighttime, and you know maybe on Monday night and you move into Tuesday, now you're kind of playing catch up uh, and that could really kind of cause some issues moving forward. So, um, and then there's another option here where you, you still got a camera, um, of course, but you, 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 know, you remove the server out of the equation by doing the, the, the video retention on the camera and then uh, doing some backup in the cloud, um, maybe for like 30, 60 or 90 days. Generally, we see this architecture as like proprietary where the camera has to be used uh, with the cloud provider. So it's not an open architecture. You're really stuck with, you know, that manufacturer from, you know, cloud services and uh, camera top to bottom. And then also- and Jordan, with that option, does it address the um, bandwidth issue somewhat? Does Yeah, it does. It yeah, great question. It does a good job of mitigating the bandwidth because, you know, um, a, a decent job, I would say, because, you know, now you're not, you're doing maybe like a week or, or, or so of storage. And generally, 
you'll go into the camera and pull the video clips that you need. You're not really kind of just dumping a ton of video up into the cloud unless you set it up to do that. Okay. Um, but yeah, big drawback for that is usually, usually the proprietariness of a system like this. And then also the fact that now that server is, is at the point of failure of the camera. So if the lens goes bad, IR illuminators go bad, whatever, the, the camera gets taken off the wall that, you know, essentially that server and the recorded video goes with that camera. Okay, great. So we've introduced to the market uh, is, a, is really more of a hybrid approach where it's completely open architecture. You can use open eye cameras, third party cameras, uh, and then we still deploy a full blown server on site where the storage is done there. But we use the cloud to you know, manage those devices and optimize, uh, optimize the system. So you can set up uh, intelligent health alerts through the cloud, such as uh, any issues with your server, maybe like uh, hard drive issues, uh, storage retention issues, or if you're not hitting certain days of storage thresholds, you can get notifications on that. And it's also going to, uh, the cloud is also going to manage your camera assets out there too. So if you have any sort of communication breakdown between the camera and the server, it's going to give you intelligent notifications based off of that as well. So, you know, you do deploy a full, a full server on site, but we use the cloud to make it uh, really, really convenient to, to deploy those assets more reliable. And then we do some things to make it uh, really easy on the networking side through the cloud as well in addition to sharing video, uh, once again, is very easy to do and streamlined through the cloud. Jordan, we have a question on the chat. Does OpenEye offer an option to push video into the cloud? Do you have an option for that? We will be. Uh, by the end of the year, we will be doing uh, like a priority, a cl uh, priority clip that will go to the cloud. So um, let's say you wanted to set up a camera in, in the IT closet overlooking the uh, server. And uh, anytime there's like motion or a person detected, you wanted to send a clip up into the cloud, we'll be doing that. And then uh, long term, we'll be doing some sort of like video archiving into the cloud. And what about with the, with the OWS, what, is, what does it look like to a mitigation plan? Like if you have a standard VMS platform right now and you want to shift to the OWS, what, what does that look like, that migration? Yeah, and that's a big... Uh, that, that's where we see a lot of, uh, of our business come from. You know, most people this, that are investing into a system are, uh, you know, maybe on their second or third system, right? And so right. Uh, maybe it's a school district or uh, a bank or whatever. If they have maybe like a fairly new server in place, they don't have to replace that server, just essentially put the open eye uh, software on top of that uh, server and replace it with what is there uh, downloaded on the server now. And then essentially just take over those cameras, the server hardware, and all those those assets. And now they're getting you know 21st century cloud managed uh, system uh, just by you know recycling those assets. Okay, great, thanks. Yes, you got it. And so, really, in a nutshell, you're getting the performance and reliability of a traditional VMS system, but you're getting the convenience and flexibility of the cloud. And so, what does that mean for us, right? So, with with OpenAI Web Services, one of the great things that the cloud does for us is uh, is, is a single sign-on feature. So whether you go to the browser, the mobile app, or the thick client desktop application, you always log in with your email address. And one of the things that is really nice about this is the fact that if someone forgets their password, they can self-heal by just clicking forget password, and then the link is emailed to them, just like your, you know, your online banking app or, or Facebook. Uh, that individual user can, can troubleshoot that themselves. So now they're not calling you know, the IT department or even calling long building technologies or even open eye and having someone you know, help get into the system. And then also if, uh, if, if, if users have uh, maybe get the new iPhone every year when that comes out or if there's any sort of turnover and uh, someone needs to download the application on their phone, now they literally just download the application, put in their email address and then all of their uh, sites and views uh, populate based on you know, those user credentials within their ecosystem. So on that with the phones, will, will the, app, the application work on iPhones or Androids? Uh, it has to be Windows-based, no. Does it work on Mac, all of the above? Yeah, great question. So we do work with uh, uh, both uh, Android and iOS with Apple. And then you can actually just use the browser on your phone. Uh, so like if you wanted to just go in and, and pull up OpenAI Web Services on, uh, on your, your mobile uh, browser, you could go in and do that. 
and literally like all the functionality and that you get from the browser make on your desktop or your laptop you get at your fingertips on your phone which is really 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 convenient. So you could you could actually view recorded video on your phone yep you could record a video on your phone you could export it from your phone and email it to someone all right there uh you know from the fingertips of your phone if you're okay. on the golf course or something yep it's all just right there okay great so, you know, one of the great things that uh, we we're kind of talking about with like the mobile app, right, is the fact that you can just download the app, put in your email address, password, and you're in, right? And a big reason for that is because we eliminate a lot of the intense networking aspects of it, such as uh, uh, port forwarding and configuring a DDNS, right? So now when you download the app, you don't have to put in that uh, IP address or, or that, that port. Essentially, the system's communicating outbound through port 443 uh, or port 80, which are, you know, commonly open uh, ports with, within a system. So there's no essentially inbound traffic into the network. What and about, from, what about on the app? Can you record, record um, can you view recorded video live or recorded video? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Very easy. Yep. Okay. And it'll Thank send you. you push notifications. So if you had to integrate it into like an access control or an intrusion system, uh, or you had like a motion event, it's going to send you a little push notification right there on the phone. You can click on it, view that event, and then you know email that to someone really quickly if you need okay. it. Great. Yeah, and so um, one more thing you know about the IT workload is the fact that uh, software management is is very simple. Most people just access the system through a browser or the mobile app. Of course, you know if you need to upgrade the mobile app, you just go to the Apple Store and you know upgrade it or open up the app and update it when it prompts you to, if you would like. And then the browser, you know, there's there's really no, you know, updating. Um, it's just, you know, just making sure that the server software is updated, which you can do from anywhere in the world, from the browser. Um, you just really click a one button and, you, and your software server, your software on the server will update in just a few minutes. Is there a, is it charge to update the software? No, there is not. It's it's just included in our licensing and our services, and uh, all those upgrades and new features that come out uh, are certainly just included in the licensing. And the licensing is very simple. It's just one license per camera. Um, there's no you can have as many users on the system, as many you know phones, uh, you know so on and so forth. You know we don't charge for like third party integrations or anything like that. It's simply just you know one license per camera. Okay, great. And uh, yeah, certainly we kind of talked about this, but um, you know, a big thing about uh, the cloud, and I think some people's hesitations to move to the cloud is cybersecurity, right? So I mentioned this earlier, but we don't have to open any inbound ports since all the communication is, is outbound. And so it actually makes a more cyber secure uh, infrastructure because now we're not making kind of Swiss cheese out of our network and opening all these back doors and ports. Uh, now it's all just communicated outbound and, 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 uh, and uh, authenticated through the cloud. And then we also do have two-step verification or multi-factor authentication that you can set up so that now that user gets a PIN and now they're not just completely reliant on their password. And you can completely customize how intense that password is. If you want it to be you know, 20 characters with uh, exclamation points and uh, capitalized characters, completely customizable on your end. All right, so I mentioned this earlier, but just to touch, you know, how we go about exporting video is, uh, you know, the video clip is captured, it's stored there on the NVR. Now the video does not, at this point in time, we don't have the method of automatically uploading video to the cloud. But when you do want to sh send a video up to the cloud, maybe to share it for, uh, maybe it's an incident and you just want to save it in the cloud so that it's not overwritten. If you have a server that's only going to give you like 30 or 60 days of video retention and you want to save it there for a long time, you can do that. But essentially, when you're sharing video, you grab that clip, send it up into the cloud, and then you email it to someone. It's, it's similar to like what you would do with YouTube, right? You capture a video on your phone, you upload it to YouTube, and then you send out a link to, um, you know, whoever that might be based on, uh, and then they, they go to YouTube uh, via that link to view it. So. We really skipped the uh, step of having to put video on a thumb drive and physically hand it to someone, um, which makes things a lot more convenient in regards to sharing video. And then also it's a more secure way of sharing video because everyone uh, probably knows that, you, you know, there can definitely be malicious, uh, you know, um, 
things on a, on, on a thumb drive. So now we see like a lot of banks and even police departments closing down their USB ports and uh, not allowing third party thumb drives being uh, allowed into their USB ports. So now this is kind of future proof for those applications where now you just email it to folks. Um, all right, cool. So I'll kind of just highlight one last thing. So, you know, within OpenAI Web Services, services is a big key to it. And really what I like to talk about is the fact that now with OpenAI Web Services giving uh, you and long building technologies the peace of mind knowing that your system is working because of our intelligent health alerts and reports. Now, if there's an issue wrong with like a camera, that alert can be sent to long building technologies before it, it reaches the end user. And so now long can go in and, and, and troubleshoot that before, before you or the end user might even know that there was an issue, right? And so what this looks like when it's all said and done is maybe there's an issue with the camera and long building technologies gets a notification. Now they can log in remotely from their office, troubleshoot that camera, and then maybe it's fixed. And if it's not fixed, now they can go, now they can reach out to you, let you know that they have to replace the camera. And now they're just going on site once with the camera and replacing it. But if that wasn't available, essentially, you know, maybe an incident happened and the end user looked at, a, uh, at their video and nothing was recorded. And then now they have to call, you know, the partner and say, hey, uh, we lost video. And then a tech has to come out there, troubleshoot it. Maybe the camera's broken, go back, order a new camera, come out there a week later. And now the technician's out there twice which this all could have been avoided just by using the services of OpenAI Web Services and only sending a technician out there one time if they absolutely had to get out there. Um, Jordan, thank you very much. That was very interesting. Um, if if any of the, anyone would like a, a demo, we could certainly set that up with Jordan and ourselves. You could contact me, Neil Ryder, or anybody that you normally deal with on the Seattle uh, security solutions team, and we'd be glad to connect us all together and do a more in-depth demo of the product. Um, with that, um, Jordan, we thank you for your time, and we thank everyone else for joining us this morning, and everyone have a good day, and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.